Hi, everybody. Welcome to Dare to Dream on GoingSoloMedia.com. And it's WGSN DB Going Solo Network, radio, TV, and podcast. We're number one internet talk show. No, sorry, talk network. Going Bold Wednesday. I'm hyper excited because I've been asked for the last few weeks about um, what is it I do, which is why I came on to make the show Dare to Dream on a show. I'm your host, Graham Williamson. I'm an international intuitive, evidential medium and psychic. Now, I've been a medium all my life, but not everybody is aware there's a distinct difference, in my opinion and my experience, between a psychic and a medium. And a lot of people are starting to become aware of going for readings to a psychic, which in part can be really informative. But the human body has so many unusual gifts innate within it. And it's all to do with energy. We're made up of energy, electro, whatever you want to call them, but it's all electrical energy. And, for example, the best one I like is when you're cold, you go light a fire. And you sit there and you go, oh, that's, that's really nice. That is physical. You can feel the heat. But sometimes you can walk into a room and just feel comfortable. And this heat is one that's subconscious. It's feeling at ease with the room that you're entering or in. And then something changes. Either somebody comes in or somebody's said something that's in the room already or something's moved or whatever change has happened, even music, sound, smell, you suddenly don't feel as comfortable in that room. And you can't put your finger on it, what it is. Well, everything in this life is made up of energy. And it vibrates at different levels. There's a lot more research on that. I don't know all the technical terms. But I do know vibrations are in everything. So our bodies, your own personal body, vibrates at a certain key. You're comfortable with who you are and you feel comfortable. I know I'm repeating myself. But it's important to understand yourself first. What makes you feel at ease, relaxed? And as I say, when you sit in a room for the first time, or a room that you've been in and something's changed, you, you don't know what it is that's changed. It's just that something doesn't feel right. How many people have said that to themselves? Something doesn't feel right. And you're looking around, you're listening, you're smelling. Something's not right. It's because the vibration of the room is altered by some other means, by something else. It's the psychic, we call it psychic ability everybody has this ability you know when you see somebody walking towards you well ladies in particular as i say oh that lady doesn't suit that color or looks brilliant in that color or the sound of her voice is great or it's not great everybody's got an opinion about something because it's something inside them is triggered and it, you want to say something even if it's to yourself you try not to be rude but you feel something's different well, we've got to go back a few thousand years to when man first started as a caveman, Stone Age and all that period. Can you imagine? Now, I know the date time-wise is very lucid. It fluctuates. And I'm just using it as an example, not as factual. Imagine a caveman climbing around and he sees a cave up in a hill, a mountain. And he... He just bimbles up there and something says to him in, in his mind, well, that could be dangerous, that, but nah. He's like, I can't see anything. I'm going in anyway. Goes in, never comes out. There's a creature in there that kills him. 
Hmm. His mates are outside and ain't coming out. Let's go in. And they don't come out either. So after a while, the ones that survive start to click on, go in that cave. Doesn't look very good idea. Nobody's coming back out. Well, imagine that thousands of times, millions of times. The caveman sees a cave. I'm going to wait a bit. I'm going to see what comes out. Something doesn't feel right. I know it sounds far-fetched, but you've got to go back to the origin of man as best we can understand it. And by the millennia, and it's coming up to modern day now, people have started to be aware that they can feel things. They don't understand it. It's like the phone's going to ring, and it does. Or I'm thinking of a friend, and the phone rings. And now talking to somebody, and they come around the corner. How do we do it? It's that vibration that we give out. Every single living and inanimate object gives off vibration. A lot of it, we humans can feel it. Animals feel it even more because they're not encumbered by ego. A lot of animals, a lot of creatures. You know, just look at the jungle movies and see how animals react. It's instinctive. We have similar abilities. To understand your psychic ability, you've got to understand yourself. And you've got to question yourself. You've got to de delve into, why did I respond that way? How did I respond that way? That was a lucky guess. Oh, ooh, I was way off there. We all do it. You know, why is it when somebody drops a loud, uh, sorry, makes a loud noise with a baby in the room, that baby will leap up. Oh, people, oh, what was that? It's an instinctive reaction to noise, which is a vibration. Your instinct is to flee from the noise. That's extreme. But it puts the point across your psychic energy that leaves and emanates your body is interacting with your surroundings. And when you get nice people coming into your room and talking to you, you feel totally at ease and you chit chat and no problem. You get one person come in the room and you're watching them like a hawk. Why? Something's telling you something's wrong. Maybe the posture, maybe the clothing, maybe the way to talk, even the way to smell. Or the, whatever it is, something doesn't feel right. It's your psychic ability, your material, physical ability that I'll say, take care, be aware. It's an everyday occurrence, but people don't even notice it. But if you want to delve into yourself and learn about your psychic abilities, you have to be aware. You have to respond and accurately. Literally, it can save your life. You know, when I learned to drive a car, my mother said to me, she said, Graham, make it automatic in how you drive your car. I thought, what? You know, so many things you've got to do. You know, you've got to look out the window, you've got to stir, change gears, because I had a stick in England. And you look out these mirrors, three mirrors, look out the windows, check it. Yeah, it's always on the go. And I said, how can I do that, Mum? I don't even understand what it is I'm doing. But I learned to drive a car. And after a while, I stopped thinking about how I drive a car. And the same for the body, my friends. It is the same for the body. When you use it enough times and recognize it, it becomes second nature. It becomes your nature. And every single person is different. Because each person's vibration, energy, is different, even slightly. You know, there may be two people that are identical signal, but they smell different, they talk different, they look different, but the vibration is the same. I'm not sure. I'm not a scientist to go further. But by my experience, every single person is an individual, 
and you feel comfortable with them or you don't. I've learned to recognize that. And if I don't feel comfortable with your vibration, I'm out of there. I'm walking away because I don't want to be like a cave. I'm stuck in the cave and never come out. Think about it. It does save your life, this ability. And you have to go into it. Test yourself. Be aware of who you are, what you do. Like you can go into these haunted houses. I've been into many, being a medium, evidential medium. And I've found a lot of spirits around. But that's a different matter as a medium. One's about raising my vibration to understand the connection between spirit and myself and to pass it on to re the recipient, you. That's a different energy level. Psychic's one thing, spirit's another. But not everybody is a medium, but everybody is a psychic. When you came to see this show, do you feel comfortable about it? Or are you happy with what I'm saying or doing? If you want to ever come on the show and make a comment, you can do so. That's what I'm here for, to share knowledge. And I like learning. And you can contact me by email because I love interaction with people. My email is amedium77, that's all one word, amedium77 at gmail.com. Just send me a text and I'll reply to you. Or you can phone me. Now I'm in Florida, USA, and my telephone number is 352-409-1060. Please leave a voice message because if you don't, I'm not going to respond because we all know telemarketers. And that's another way you can contact me or on Facebook or through goingsellermedia.com. You can always watch my videos because they're on YouTube and there's a link on my show to those pre-recorded shows. And if you go to live WGSN DB Facebook and YouTube for more shows, Ruka and Amazon TV. We're, we're, we're getting huge. I can't believe how big Going Solo has actually become. I'm, I'm so proud of everybody. And all because of one lady, Cece. The one that looks after everybody in the background. It's her idea. And I love her for it. See, even she's got the hearts for me. <laughs> but you see, the way I work with Cece and a lot of people on this is our energy matches. We feel comfortable with each other. We interact. Our psychic abilities. I'm aware of it. Not many of the other hosts are. Or even Cece. I don't speak for other people. But I feel comfortable with this group. If I didn't, I wouldn't be here. Because I have learned it saved my life more than once. And it saved other people's lives because I was Royal Navy, 1971 to 1986. And some of my psychic abilities told me, you don't want to go in there, Graham. Get the hell off the ship. We got off on a one ship. It blew up, burst into flame in the Mediterranean. Another time, we're going to rescue another um, the ship had been rammed by one into another one and we were rushing over to try and see if there's any survivors and for some reason I just stuck my hand over the side of the boat and pulled I don't know who was more shocked me or the coxswain of the boat I was on I pulled a person out of the water and saved their life it just felt think automatic reaction because I say I've been doing this all my life I'm very aware of my psychic ability. I can feel energy. I I don't control it in what I pick up. I only control how I react. Do I feel comfortable? And then I'll go forward. If I don't feel as I said, I back off. It's the understanding why you do it. It's self-preservation. And also, the ones that you love, it is for them as well. Because when you feel... Everything's okay, you prosper. And you know the alternative. Life is so sim simple, people screw it up because they let their ego 
step in and say, no, no, I've been told it's okay. It doesn't feel right, but I've been told it's okay. If you've been told one thing and it doesn't feel right, I'd listen to the latter because I don't trust anybody that I don't know. Trust comes from many factors in life. And your psychic ability is one of the key issues of trust. When you find a partner that you really get on with, and there's no doubt, or is the doubt in your relationship? Because your psychic ability really has its own way of living. And you have to understand your own way of living do you mold yourself do you change yourself do you pretend do you put a facade of who you are for somebody else so they like you i made mistakes in my life but i shall learn from them and i don't regret those mistakes because it made me what i am today i'm not proud of them but i sure i'm not saying i wish i'd never had those experiences because I can now tell you about psychic abilities because of my past. Because the energy I have will not let me sit on my backside and say nothing. Oh, do it your own way. You still do it your own way, but with a little bit of understanding what it means to do it your own way. As I say, when I have sat in a haunted house, up in fact, St. Augustine, when people say, oh, it's all negative, it's all negative, it's bad, it's, it's an evil spirit. And I, I felt comfortable. I just sat in there and I started describing this person to the other people there. And one of the hosts was smiling. I said, you know, I said, this feels so great, this place. I said, I could have a cup of tea here, a jam sandwich or whatever. I said, I feel at home. Turned out the person that lived there was from England, who'd been killed by accident. And it was a lady. Now, I wasn't talking to the spirit. I was feeling the room. The room felt so comfortable. But people were listening to somebody else telling them a story. There's only one other person out of about 15 people that felt as comfortable as I did because we weren't listening to the story the other host was saying about. We were just listening to our psychic ability. We felt comfortable. We sat down and, yeah, it's nice, isn't it? It's just, there used to be a chair over there or something because you can feel the emanation of what was there and what is there. That's why when you can walk in a room for the you know that you've really known for a long time, like your bedroom, you walk in, a, you know instinctively when something's been moved or something's gone. As soon as you walk in, oh, hang on, something's. How do you know that? Because your psychic ability, your energy, is not resonating exactly as it should be. Something's changed, and when you listen to it, you react straight away but only by practice. And if you're lucky, you don't need much practice to save your own life because your psychic ability is your lifesaver. And if you're a medium as well, you've got double bonus. That's another story. I think I've done enough about mediums for a bit. I wanted to differentiate between the two and say, so I've just been to do... Uh, a session in Ocala, Saturday and Sunday at the Shrine Club. And there was a gentleman that came through who was supposed to be just Down syndrome. But my gut said, no, 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 no. I've met a lot of people with Down syndrome. My parents worked with mental and physical challenge. And Down syndrome was one of the key elements, a number of the wards that they were nursing at. But not only was he not 100% Down syndrome, I felt he had something else, an ability. 
And I started to say words, no reaction. And I started to say numbers. Oh, look, he was responding. Couldn't speak pr properly. But you could hear the sounds he was trying to make. I went, what's 10 and 10? Oh, no. What's 10 times? No. What's 10 and 10? 20. 10 times 10. Oh, no. And it, it couldn't speak the word clearly, but you could hear the word. I said, oh, what's, what's 10 times 10? And then halved. Okay. He was quick. And the mother says, what are you doing? I said, your son's autistic. He's a mathematical whiz. Take him to a special needs facility and find out. He was 32 years old. I was, it just felt right to talk to him, to listen to him, to feel his energy. And I felt my past, where I'd been on wards, as I said, with my parents, with people with mental and physical challenges, and I learned to watch people. It helped hone my ability. And it felt something special about this guy. That was big. He wasn't a small guy, but I'm fragile compared to this gentleman. But you should have seen a smile on his face. 32, I'm just finding out he's a mathematical whiz. Because your psychic ability, when you listen to it, gives you so much more awareness of surroundings of, excuse me, and of people. Even animals, they know when you're comfortable. You've all seen it. The dog box, and as soon as anybody makes a noise, but as soon as it recognizes, happy as Larry. Abilities other than psychic, hearing, seeing, smelling, taste, sound, touch, and the sixth sense, the psychic sense. Then you've got the spiritual sense. Then you can go even deeper with your auric energy, which is the energy that's emanating from the body, because the body being electrical emanates a field, electrical field, and that field vibrates to certain resonance. And I am amazed at some people that go, oh, that felt right, but I don't know what it is. I'm nosy, or sorry, I'm inquisitive. I like to learn a little bit more about it so I know what the heck I'm doing. And that's why I help, well, with CC, allow me to do Dare to Dream. And you've all seen that picture up there. I can never do this right. There it is. That's the Dare to Dream picture from my mum. The rescue medium. Her last gift to me. Dare to Dream. I want to be awake in my dreams. I want to be able to say I'm doing the best I can wide awake to help other people. And the way I do that is listening to my psychic ability. Every minute of every day, I'm surviving. Because rest assured, there's a lot out there in this world that want to harm you. But there's also a lot more that doesn't. But you've got to work that fine line going between the two. And to do that by using your psychic ability, understanding yourself, understanding what doesn't feel right, what does feel right, makes a difference. It's even picking up a book to read. I, I went into a, a shop today, and I haven't bought a book in a long time. I just saw the cover of this book. I thought, I want to read that. And so it opened it up as a murder mystery. I've been talking to a friend who does cold cases. Now I'm reading a book about cold case. Not planned, just saw this book, went up, picked it up. It was on sale as well, half up. You see, I listen to my energy. I listen to it and feel it. And if I can, I'll go all the way with it. But being aware of it, I then have a choice to say yes or no. 
the instinct to survive is great in everybody. Even, even with the heart pain, what's this pain, you know, when you've fallen in love and you've split up and your heart aches and all this stuff? Yes, it's painful. Do you know what that pain means, in my words? Your body wants to heal. It doesn't like being where it is. It needs to grow strong again. And if you keep on dwelling on it, it disrupts your field, your energy. And it makes you feel depressed because you're using all this energy and it's screwing itself up. That's why your heart feels heavy. It's not in sync anymore. And from what the scientists are saying, we have two brains, one in the head and one around the heart. And both have to work together. But the one in the heart is better at survival than the one up here. That's what I found out. Because I feel with my heart, then I work it out with my head. If I just thought about it in my head all the time, I wouldn't get anywhere. Because I'd be analysing, overthinking, overreacting or underreacting and not doing an angry thing about it. But with my heart, it feels right or it doesn't. And we've got the centre part here. The emotional centre. That's the first thing that tells you something feels right or something doesn't. Everybody's heard the expression. My guts told me. I was listening to my guts. I feel. And it's true. This is the emotional centre of the whole of you. That's why when you get the stomach aches, because your mind's been overreacting and circumstances, the energy is all conflicting and you don't know what the heck's happening in your body saying, oh, no, 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 let's, let's sort of try and sort it out. But your head's taken over from your heart and people are telling you one thing, your voice is telling you something else. And it all screws it up. So the emotion is all spinning. Nothing feels right. Your psychic abilities are trying to tell you you're in the wrong place. Shut up, step back, calmly breathe, either leave or change the situation. As soon as you are relaxed, that's not just physically, that's emotionally, energetically. That auric field that's emanated from is all back in sync. It's relaxing. Your body feels safe again. That's why, you know, um, people say, I thought I could do so many push-ups or press-ups or squats or run a mile or whatever. But after a bit, I thought, no, I better stop. Your body tells you it's pushing itself too hard. It's just the same as a psychic ability, but that's a physical as well with your intent. Your ego wants you to do something. I say ego as to define of your intent, your intention. It's not about bragging or anything. That's egotistical. This is the ego of self, of who you are. And it always likes to step forward and say, I'm in control. My heart's in control with my guts. Then I'll work it out with my, my ego. Because I don't want to push my body so hard, I cause it injury. I've done enough running and enough swimming, long distance, to know when my body says you're done graham i can't do endurance runs anymore because my body said you're a little bit over 21 now graham you can't do it anymore but i still like to keep reasonably fit but my auric energy has changed because i've become more aware of that energy and other people's energy an inanimate object energy as a medium I can do clear sentence by holding an inanimate object, even a photograph, or somebody's uh, gold chain or watch or whatever can fit in my hand. And I can feel the energy coming from it and give a reading from it. I don't know how I do it. It's just that this ability I have as medium, it passes through me and my memories are stimulated and I pass on the message. 
the best I can interpret. With a psychic ability, it's black and white. It feels good or it doesn't. Do this or not do this. Live, pardon the term, or die. You see, even, even when you're at school as kids, you're told, have a guess. Go and sit with those people. Say this, do this, draw this, whatever. And you come away and think, what have I learned? It's a material world. But you say, did you enjoy yourself? The parents normally say to the child, did you enjoy yourself at school today? Yeah, it wasn't bad. Or, no, I didn't. Someone was picking on me. They didn't say anything or do it. It's just I didn't feel comfortable with it. Please, if you've got young children and they come home and say that, listen carefully. They have abilities far sharper than parents because theirs have not been blocked by a lifetime of experience and being told what's right and what's wrong. I was fortunate, along with my siblings, having a mother that literally, and the grandmother and the grandfather, my father I don't, didn't know, but she taught us, what is it you're feeling? Tell us. How do you feel? Why do you feel? And we learned to express ourselves. And it wasn't discounted. You know, sometimes they knew that we were lying, as kids do. But they found out why we were lying. But nine times out of ten, we were telling them the truth. And mum and grandma and granddad knew when we were doing so. Children have far greater gifts if you allow them to expand. Let them use those gifts. You say, I was very fortunate. I'm the only one out of seven siblings now that actually does medium work and use my psychic abilities. Yeah, I'm the black sheep of the family, but I'm proud of it. Because, believe it or not, even though they don't believe in what I do, they'll ask me, Graham, what do you think about this? You've got good, good instinct. But they don't believe in it, but they'll listen to what I'm telling them. Where'd that one happen? I love them all. But they're different to me, and I'm different to them. I'm different from you. But we all have this ability or abilities within ourselves, but you've got to work at it. There's no weird stuff about it. It's more weird to stop a child developing that psychic ability than it is an adult. I've, in the forces, I've got to keep on going back because it's one of the greatest trainings I ever had. Going on a ship, I know I told you about the boat, here, yeah, but going on a ship that was on fire. And as soon as I touched the deck of this ship with the coxswain next to me, I said, I need somebody to go with me, something don't feel right, stay here. I was sent somebody with me. Went down into the engine room. I said, it's that plate. Get the heck off the ship. Run. I'd seen barrels of fuel. Big, big, big petroleum barrels. The captain was smuggling illegal fuel. We got off that ship about a quarter of a mile. It went up. Yeah, it went up. It just didn't feel right. But the people that I worked with knew me enough to trust me. And I'd worked with this team a lot. Because our energies work together. And you know one of the things I was not really proud of is that I used to drink a lot. I'm a recovered alcoholic. But in those three years that I was too bad to rationally think, my instincts went off the chart. I could still run eight to ten miles from the base to a bar, dance all night, drink all night, eat fish and chips or whatever it was, then run all the way back and do my job the following morning. That's how bad it was. But I also knew when somebody was following me, it wasn't the time to go outside because some people weren't very nice out there. 
because we've been drinking and there's in the navy base or near a navy base there's a lot of fights going on and i'm a living coward but i also knew some nights i could run back and i had a police car stopping me because they knew me the officers do you want to lift uh chef because everybody called me chef and i wasn't i was a cook you want to lift no i'm all right i'm safe tonight but they'd follow me sometimes if it was foggy keep behind me it was only eight miles and it was going from weymouth to portland it was the base i was at at the time and i'm amazed how i survived some of those things but when i sobered up i realized i've got to work at this my my instincts had been heightened because my ego didn't care i was open as a book i was a quiet drinker if i got too drunk i'd just sit down in a corner fall asleep i wasn't aggressive at all which i'm happy about i didn't cause fights i just backed off and went to sleep but i felt safe i always felt safe do you feel safe in your surroundings do you feel safe for the people you're with if you don't say something or do something because you are in charge of your own life you're in charge of your responses to your abilities and the more you use them, the more you understand them. I'm trying to give you varied examples of what happened to me in a way that may trigger something in you. And this is what my show is about, Dare to Dream. You can achieve so much more if you believe and know yourself more. So think about that, because we'll be going for a break in a minute. And uh, I'll see you when I get back. And I'll talk a little bit more about understanding your psychic abilities. See you soon. Hi, I'm John Thomas. I want to share with you a professional products and services directory we call Going Solo Directory. And you need to check this out. If you want exposure to your business or are seeking professional product or services, this directory has it all. And that membership for the many special features, you get the benefit of a worldwide exposure with a 40-minute video interview on an international business show showcase. All this for just one low annual fee. For more information, contact GoingSoloDirectory.com. Welcome back to Dare to Dream. I'm your host, Graham Williamson, international intuitive, evidential medium, and psychic. Today, we're talking about understanding your psychic abilities. Now, I've talked a lot about different ways of feeling and stuff like that. But the other way is not very difficult. It's literally meditating, being at peace with yourself, feeling what you can from the room you're in, or surroundings do you feel comfortable or don't you and this is what being aware of your own psychic abilities comes from being aware we sit in our homes and we're watching the telly and we're getting intentional with whatever we're watching on the tv but you're not listening really it's what you're feeling when you're watching the program does a program make you feel happy or sad angry or happy meditation is a calming of mind of the thoughts it's not about yoga it's about being at peace with yourself and your surroundings i learned a long time ago to switch off calm myself and one of the best ways I found is takes one and a half minutes I'll take my glasses off so you can see and what you do is literally 
close your eyes, keep your eyes closed all the time until I tell you to open them. So you close your eyes now. And after about five or ten seconds, you're asked, what colours are you seeing with your eyelids? And after a couple of seconds, people will say, a colour. Keep that, make sure to keep your eyes closed. And say, right, remember what that colour means to you emotionally at this moment. Um, oh, okay. Now say, do you see black yet? Nine times out of ten, I say yes. I say, well, concentrate on the black. The black is absorption of knowledge. You go into the black, you're safe, it's warm, it's empathic, it's love, it's care. The warmth of it. And as you sit in it, breathe it in and let it go through you, it becomes you. All that patience, all that peace, all that love is inside and outside. It's protecting you. It's, I've got to keep on repeating it. It's the empathy of life, of energy. There's nothing that can harm you in this black because it's knowledge that you are soaking in and becoming. And as you say, think about it. Breathe it in. Literally breathe from the stomach, not the chest, the stomach. Breathe it in and then fill your stomach, and then fill your chest of air and breathe it out. In through the nose and slowly out through the mouth. Do that a couple of times. And then ask yourself, how do I feel? Then do it again. Deeper breath and hold it and then let it out. And your mind's calming down. Then when you open your eyes, you're aware of so many different things. You don't have to move your head. You don't have to look at anything. Just remember what it is you feel, what it is you hear, smell, see, taste, everything. And what did those colours mean to you? Ask yourself, what did those colours mean to you? Because that is the emotional state of where you are at that time. And those colours can mean different things each time you do this. It calms the mind but heightens the senses. Because black to me, for example, when you look at the night sky, what do you see first, the stars or the black? The black holds the stars, the white light. The stars are noticeable because of the black, and the black is noticeable because of the stars. And I always say the stars are the white light, the giving of knowledge. You know when you get a good idea, you say the light's on. Well, I've just thought of that. Because the knowledge, you understand the black, you don't understand. The white, you do. And it calms my mind. I can be asleep in 23 seconds if I do that deeper. And I've got proof I can do that. 23 seconds of sleep, 32 in REM. But that's because I was an endurance runner. And because I meditated when I ran, I felt the atmosphere around me. You can feel the atmosphere just by doing this breathing technique and calming your mind to meditate take the worries from your mind don't concentrate on anything but the black the black has nothing coming into it going out of it it just feels good and safe it feels warm you feel the love and it's not never going to harm you but you have to have black and white for example north and south pole light on light off and i'm not doing <laughs> the karate kid but you see all these techniques enhance your awareness of your energy the auric energy that your body emanates that is your psychic abilities and each person has their own way of doing things i'm just giving you an example of how to start learning but to be calm within yourself is a very good place to begin and when you understand what it is you feel, when somebody changes or something changes that field, 
you know straight away. The psychic ability is enhanced. And it's fun learning about these abilities that you have. It has nothing to do with spirit. That is my point of view. It has nothing to do with spirit. It has everything to do with your physical, material awareness of you in this world at this time. And the more you listen to yourself in this respect, the safer you will be. But you've got to be honest with yourself. You can't lie about this. You know, I've, I've seen so many people say, I'm going to give you a reading as a psychic and delve into spirit. That's medium. Nothing to do with material psychic ability. And there's a difference. I've experienced it. You can experience it. And I hope you'll come and join us again in a couple of weeks. I've got the glasses on. Because I know the next show is going to be the 29th of March at 6 o'clock. And it's a Wednesday. I hope you'll join us again. It'll be a different topic, I hope. Or maybe it's not. I don't know. Because I trust my instincts. And each show I've done, it's been slightly different every time. I never knew I could do this. But it felt good. And due to CC and all the teams that have their own show, I'm able to share it with you. I'm going solo media.com. We are WGSN DB going solo network, radio, TV, and podcasts. And we're doing all really well. Now, if you want to contact me, email me on a medium. 77 at gmail.com send me an email ask questions if you want to come and speak on the show let us know or you can phone me i'm in florida usa and my telephone number is 352-409-1060 please leave a voice message otherwise i will not respond to it we've all experienced the scam callers I'm on Facebook, look for Graham Williamson, you know my face, and learn a bit about who you are, because my show is about you, not about me. I hope you'll join me on Dare to Dream, you say I'm your host, Graham Williamson. I'm international, intuitive, evidential, medium, and psychic. And thank you for watching. It's been a pleasure. I'll see you next time. Thank you.